ethics in this business is a very important thing. Now, firstly, I'll say two things that I've done in my life. Firstly, I've become a property developer. And secondly, I teach people about property. So effectively, the general community that doesn't know who I am out there and sees a Facebook post of some sort thinks that I'm a developer that has no ethics and secondly, that I'm a property spruker. Now, I'm neither one of those. I have a really high ethic and moral and integrity basis to everything I do. I make sure that the community benefits first before I can benefit from a monetary stance. We have a catchphrase in our business that says it needs to make sense before it makes dollars. That is, it needs to benefit the community first before it makes us money. Now, it does have to make us money. It has to tick both boxes. But essentially, if it doesn't tick both, we won't do a project. And I ask you with all my heart that in everything that you do, make sure you're ethical. I've seen the possibility of other people stealing deals from um, Facebook pages. Someone who's put up a deal and says, I'm looking at this property and the next thing we know, it's gone. Many years ago, I feel very, um, I feel very, I still have a very strong and sorrow uh, heart around the fact that I was talking about a deal on stage and I mentioned a particular industry that this, this deal had that the student was actually in, um, looking at. And unfortunately, in a crowd of about 300, seven people decided that they would take the easy option and ring up and they Googled that, that particular industry, which was a rare industry. They found this property and then they, um, one of them bought it and it stole the deal from the student that I was working with. And again, I feel really bad about that and it still haunts me to this day. Now, the student understood when I explained to them how sorry I was, and I'm very thankful that that student knows who I am and that the, the words that came out my mouth damaged that position for them. But they also know that, you know, in, in the whole um, energy of what was going on there, that it turned out. I ask you to be ethical in everything that you do in property around the negotiation, around the people that you're dealing with, and make sure you don't get yourself into a situation where when it comes to the balance and the way up of your choices, that you um, don't feel right about something and that your, your intuition, your stomach feeling isn't right. We've had deals in the past where um, we've been in a position where we, were, we had this deal, it was actually a two-story property, it had a granny flat down in the corner here, and it had a four-bedroom house. Now, these, this couple, um, beautiful couple, were putting, put themselves in a position where bankruptcy was coming up. She had um, a terminal illness, and he had broken his hip. Now, I didn't know a lot of this deal, um, but I did know that they were sick. So I had a sit down with them and I essentially said to them, look, I want you to make, I want to make sure that you understand that um, we're here and I want to make sure that this helps you as well as helping me out as well. I sat down with them and essentially we'd had contracted and we made a deal at $400,000. And the $400,000 deal actually had a longer term settlement. Uh, We were going to make sure that they were looked after, that their costs were paid for, and that they wouldn't go into a bankruptcy situation. Um, About Once we did agree on the deal, I then said, well, okay, well, now we need to talk to your bank. So can we have a look at your bank details? We signed a non-disclosure around uh, making sure we didn't tell anyone um, any details about their situation in the bank detail component of it. Um, And they're okay for me to tell this story because... Uh, Fortunately, she did survive and she's still around. Now, in this deal, their mortgage was actually $475,000. So effectively, what would have happened is we would have bought this property for $400,000 and they would have ended up with a personal loan at four seventy-five. dollars Now, most people that had very low morals and integrity would have gone ahead with that deal because there was a good $100,000 to be made in the deal except a a couple, an older couple, was going to end up in a position that wasn't right for them. They would have had to dig into their super fund. They would have um, not been in a good position overall for the rest of their life. And so essentially what um, I did was I said to them, I'm sorry, I can't do this deal. The reason I can't do this deal is that you're going to be in a worse situation than when you first met me. And from an ethical perspective, I'm not happy or comfortable to do that. So what I said to them was, Let's not worry about these two figures here. 
you're currently in a position that you're not well and you do have a four bedroom house that you're living in and you have a granny flat that's empty. Now it doesn't take a lot of thought and process to say, how can we fix their problem? So the first thing I said to them was, you've got a broken hip and you're not very well and you're actually having to look after a four bedroom house. So what I'd like for you to do is if you can, move down into the granny flat, which is comfortable. It's not the biggest size um, house that you've ever lived in, but right now you need to concentrate on your health and he needs to stop climbing up and down stairs because he had a broken hip. Now it would have been good for rehab, but unfortunately right then and there, it was difficult for him to get around. And then what they did was they went and rented the property here and we helped them contact their bank and said to their bank, currently right now, we're both quite ill and we would like to be able to stall the payments um, and, and give us a breather for six months. They were paying, paying principal and interest. So they basically gave them six months um, of non-payment of their loan, and then they went to interest only. Now by doing these two things, they got themselves into a much better situation. They were managed to save some money so that they had some buffer. Now with that release of pressure of the bankruptcy away from them, she could then concentrate on her health. He could concentrate on making sure that his broken hip was gonna get better too. And in that situation, I walked away from a deal that could have made us $100,000, but I walked away with a feeling that I didn't rip someone off. Ethically, you have to choose the right thing moving forward. And if we've got any chance of changing the community perspective of how they look at property investors and developers in this country, you have to do it from this place. Now I know that there's a lot of people out there that really couldn't care and that all they are is chasing money. I know that if you're sitting there right now and you're watching this message, you've got to understand that everything we do, with all my heart and all my emotion, I want to make sure you're the right person to be in this, in this tribe. In this community, we look after people and we look after each other. Now, as emotional as it is for me to bring up stories like this, I want, to, I want you to also know that I'm here to support you and the community is here to support you as well. We've got some amazing team members, we've got some amazing students, and we've got amazing connections all over the country that absolutely understand that small is a new big, the fundamentals program, and specifically the high res program, with the 1 million self-contained homes that we're gonna produce over the next 10 years, is gonna make a big difference to the landscape of property investing. That property investing is gonna go from taking a property from a commodity to actually providing homes for people again. Homes that people like to live in and homes that people want to live in. So that's my message. Please be ethical with everything you do whether it be dealing with a real estate agent, whether you're buying, negotiating, selling, whether you're dealing with tradespeople or people that you're buying from directly, make sure that at the end of the day, when the scales get weighed up of good and bad, that you've done as much good as you possibly can to help someone else out. Because ultimately, when you help yourself out, other people get helped out as well, and the karma will return back to you. It's my message.